Right, mailbag time. Let's see what we've got. This looks like it's had a hard life on the way here. Also took a while to get here too. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if it's your first time here. Also, I just passed 20,000 subscribers. Dave was doing a live stream and mentioned it on there. I was, I was really close and he told me he wanted to come and subscribe and suddenly I've got a bunch of subscribers. So if you're new here from Dave, welcome. So yeah, 20,000, finally got there. It took a lot longer than I thought it would, but uh, that's fine. Got there in the end. Next, I think I 25,000 I'll do the giveaway. I was debating doing a 20,000. So I did a 25,000 instead, because I think that's just a, a better number. So 25,000, I'll do some kind of giveaway. I'll probably do one to my Patreons and one to just general subscribers as well, so I'll do two giveaways, basically. That's what I'm planning, anyway. Lithium batteries. Lithium thionyl chloride batteries. Do you know how hard it's been to try and get these bloody things? I've been trying to get batteries. Like I tried to buy them from Element 14, local supplier, apparently, but not, because everything's now sent from overseas. But ship them to me, because they're dangerous. And then RS components also wouldn't ship them to me because they're dangerous. And yet I can buy them from China. So now I've got loads of these things because I bought a whole bunch of different ones expecting some to get told no, you can't have them or whatever. Or maybe intercepted or whatever. And now I've got loads of them. So I've got like 10 in here. Well, 10 here. And I've got some other ones I've, I've, <laughs> I've got before as well in other mailbags, which you guys may not have seen yet because I'm actually behind in the mailbags. I've got about a month's worth already queued up. The load's done. Actually having to skip a couple of episodes to try and get things done in a different sequence. Anyway, so yeah. A whole bunch of these lithium cells. So these are backup batteries for like PLCs, stuff like that. Also for test equipment. Test equipment uses them quite a lot. I'm stocking up because these will sit around for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Absolutely fine. As long as you're still up in the right storage environment, they will last years and years. You know, they're long life batteries anyway. When I do come to use one, I've definitely got something. Also, thanks to my Patreon supporters and if one doesn't, YouTube memberships. Support helps in the bike and smell bag and there's a test equipment to fix. Yeah, something else I went a bit overboard with. Oh no, my ramp's failing me. I think I need to sharpen it again. Everyone needs a sharp memory. I do about sharp memory. Hit some ram. HM4864P-2. Yeah, I think I went overboard. I never do that, do I? I never, I never get carried away. Because I've got these ones here, and then I've got... Like, I've got these ones here, and I've got these ones here. I think I need an intervention. And I've got these ones here as well. So these are RAM which are used in the HP 3561A DSA which I've been fixing. So I did need a single chip because I was getting a RAM error when I first got the device. And so I needed one chip, which I've used. I put it in, that actually fixed that particular problem. There's still got other stuff which I'm doing videos on. The RAM is this stuff and it's got at least 16 of those RAM chips in it. I thought I'll get a bunch of them, I'll stock up on them in case maybe the ones I'm buying are fakes. You know, so I bought them in different places and that sort of stuff. You're never going to get. There's lots of fake stuff out there. I bought from different places and so far all the ones I've purchased have been real. So I've got loads of them. And so, you know, I've got a bunch more here. What's in here? 20 is that? 18 I think? I can't remember. Anyway, I could count them. 18. So 18 there. Plus the ones I've got over here, so I've, I've got loads of them now. I'm never going to run out of this RAM. Next thing. Oh, fail. Hmm. Here it is. So I bought some of these previously. I actually have a use for these. Now, these are 3.8mm, excellent. I'm going to move all these ones. So I've purchased a bunch of different ones. You can get these little plugs in different sizes, little bungs, I suppose you can call them, even. These are 3.8mm, which are perfect for putting inside a 3.5mm jack, for headphone jacks and stuff. So if you're trying to make one a bit you know, dustproof or whatever, you just don't use it very often, then you can get these and chuck them in there. So there links down below for these things. I featured these previously as well, but I didn't buy enough, because I was just trying them out to figure out which size I needed. So I did buy a range of sizes, 3.8mm seems to be the perfect fit, so that's those ones. So I also purchased these ones and I hope they'll do a certain job too. Let me find the right piece of equipment and I'll see if it actually fits. So the intention is to try and get bungs which fit inside this kind of DC jack. It's a 2.1mm jack, 
because these I've used on some of my projects I've been building in the past and they use that doors and I want to try and make them a bit more weatherproof by seeing them so let's see if it's the right size it kind of goes in it's going look at that it works excellent a bit of a tight one though I might I don't know I might need to look at that maybe it needs a slightly different size that is maybe half more smaller would be better I don't know if I do it, it's a 6mm, I wonder if I can get a 5.5 It's in this one Oh I've got, to, I've got to sharpen this thing, this is just ridiculous Right, try this again So this is a soldering iron handle and tips which will hopefully fit on my Jabe UD1200 which I did a review on This is a C115 handle and it came with three tips. I hope this fits. I'll better find out. Yes, yeah, so I don't buy that. It's garbage. Well, that was disappointing. Looks like this is better. So these are some machine pen IC sockets. I thought we'd get some. Because why not? Now I normally have the press pin type, I don't know that, I think they're better in a way but some people say you know these are better because they've got a tighter fit, you know they fit under the pins a bit tighter because these are round, obviously the IC pins are not round, they're flat, so they have to try and deform and bed into the corners of the IC pin, so to me what you end up with here with is four points of contact on each pin, which in a way you think that's probably fine, only one really, but if you've got these flat IC sockets, then you're actually getting a contact point across the whole front and the whole back of the pin if it fits properly. <laughs> if it doesn't, you might not be getting that at all. So, anyway, I thought I'd get some of these. They're cheap. I've got some. Just, you know. I only have one of these machine pin ones left, so I thought I'd get some more. But normally I prefer the other type because to me, that type is well, easier to fit because the IC is getting in and out a bit easier. These are quite resistant to the IC pins going in. You know, you have to push quite hard to get them in, so they're a bit more stress on the circuit you insert in the IC and that sort of stuff. But they do have an advantage, is that, as you can see, you've got these big standoff pins here, right? So they stand off the board. And that itself could be handy if you've got stuff underneath the component, you can stand it off. Or if you've got um, trouble with traces, you can solder the top of the board, not just the bottom. Things like that. So there is a reason for getting these. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And check out the playlist in the video as well. Now, the squash box. This way it's clear. The squash box. Yeah. I hope it's okay. Alright, let's get into the here and see what's in this box and hopefully it's in one piece still. Well, it's a box inside a box. We've keeps the newspaper, so very well packaged. Definitely approved. We appear to have a note, so I'm going to slide that out of the way. Don't dock yourself, do we? We'll shove this over to one side for now. Rich, I should just a professional. Programmed. This is recommended to me when I was developing this thing here, which is my little DRAM tester, which I built for um, testing the DRAM on the HP3561 and all these DRAM chips I'm buying. So obviously, you know, I've done projects on this and made it open source. It's available on PC Bay. Yeah, so you know, you want to build this yourself, you can. Parts list is there. It's relatively cheap. PC Bay make the boards for you. It's easy, all right? And that works for testing 4164s and 4864 DRAM chips. And you can probably reprogram it to do other stuff too. This is recommended to me by someone. I can't remember who it was in one of Lies chats. I've seen this on Adrian's Digital Basement, I think it was, and Noel's Retro Lab, I think it was. And so I decided to buy one. Now you may notice it's a bit flat. The components are, are compacted on this one. Maybe it's because the box is squashed, I don't know. <laughs> nah, what well, it is, it's a kit, you have to build it yourself. So you have to supply your own components. It either sends you the PCB and you can choose to have the chip programmed or not. And um, if it's pre-programmed, you don't need a couple of parts because obviously you had to put those on the boards to allow for programming. I need to build this project up 
And this can test not just RAM, but it can test loads of different things. It's mainly meant for retro computer type things. I think that's the main target audience was that kind of segment on the market. But it can do so many different things. It, I think you can program some EPROMs as well now. It's, it's quite good. And it's always continuously developing and adding more to it. So I've, um, I think there's actually a firmware update since he posted this. There's been at least one firmware, firmware update to it. So I have to try and figure out how to program the thing because it's not really something I do. And circuit programming is not something I've done like that really. Anyway, so that's that. And it's got some messages in here, things I have to read as well. And here is a power supply board which goes on the top here. So I've ordered a bunch of parts and a lot of them have already arrived. Maybe they've all arrived actually. I've shown them in previous mailbags in this digi box here where I've got loads of stuff shoved in here. So this is probably all the stuff I need to work on this thing. There's probably other stuff I've got laying around which is also for it but you know we'll get there. So I might even do a video on this building it. Um, I may do one. I don't know how interesting is it watching someone assembling a circuit board. Is that interesting? I don't know is it? Maybe fast forward like 10 times speed. I'm pretty sure I've got all the parts. So I think I've got just about all the bits I need to actually build it. I did order them off the parts list which he publishes for, when for this project so I don't know what do you reckon. Tell me down below in the comments if you think that I should do a video assembling and testing this thing trying it on a few chips let me know down there what do you think so check out the playlist here there subscribe link over here and the patreon support link over here if you want to help support the channel help me to buy items from mailbag and things like that Catch you later.